well. I could teach this lesson tonight. Let's read our scripture. 2 Thessalonians 2, chapter 1, chapter 2, verse 1. Can we read together, please? Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering unto him. Let's go. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that they shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Let's agree together. Who what? Who oppose that? And exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. We stop there, verse 4. Show himself. That he is God. Can you imagine whether in the, in the soundness of our minds, how can Satan enter the house of God, sit in the seat of God, be worshipped as God, and the church do not recognize it? Somebody has got to be sleeping. Somebody's got to be sleeping. So we have a few points to make here tonight. Not as yet. So verse 1 says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody say, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, one more time. By the coming. Online. At your home, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is a measurement or standard. Say it's a measurement or standard. By which we measure where we should be. Can we all say this together? The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is a standard or the measurement by which we measure our lives. Is that okay? It's not by how we feel when Pauline sings. It's not by a momentarily feeling because I got you all hyped up. It's not something that lasts for this half an hour. It's a standard by which it's set until he comes. It is bigger than something that is good for this moment. It is bigger for something that is just for tonight. Somebody say, until he comes. Amen. It means that between now and then, he can come anytime. He can come tonight, tomorrow night, the next midday. He could come, somebody say, anytime. Somebody say, suddenly. So we measure ourselves against something that could happen suddenly. It means that if something can happen suddenly, that means that we don't have any time to prepare. We always have to be prepared. Suddenly. Somebody say suddenly. 
the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and suddenly the church will be caught away, and only those that are prepared will be ready for the rapture. And that's the basis of our preparation. Is that okay? Amen. So there is someone that opposes that. There is someone that's called a devil that opposes that. So point number one is that these are people that you need to be aware of. And this is a spirit that need to be exposed. Can we read please? People who dismiss the coming of the Lord. Watch that spirit. People who tell us, no man, you know, you don't have to go to church. You don't have to. Don't worry about it. You know, there are people who subtly, are you following this? Dismisses the urgency of the coming, the preparation for the coming of the Lord. It's a spirit. It's a spirit that is working softly. Why? Are people out there? And why are people preaching everything except the preparation for the coming, the return of the Lord? So if someone is subtly whispering to you, you don't have to. You don't have to be this serious. It's a spirit. That's not your friend. That's very highly demonic. My next point, the objective is, point number two, is that what, what the Spirit does, let's read, discourages preparation and commitment by procrastination. Come on, big one, let's go. Come on, all y'all intelligent people. Discourages preparation and commitment by saying not today, tomorrow. How many of you know about those people? Watch out. Watch out. They might not be a tomorrow. So one of the spirits that you got to look for that is operating in people and pastors and preachers is a spirit that say, no man, you will do it tomorrow. For, the, for many people, Tomorrow never happened. Now, are you aware of that? Are you one of them? So this is a message for the children of God who wants to take a stand. Do we have a few people here who want to take a stand tonight? So this is the spirit that you have to look out for and you have to expose yourself. That's why we have to take these messages, share them around so that people can be taught. Because it's not everybody who knows what's going on. Tomorrow. When are you going to go to church? Next week. Why are you not going today? Well, we have a lot of Sundays left. What makes you so sure? What make us so certain that we have a lot of Sundays left?
Number three. Can we read together? People who make light. Come on. Who make light the purpose of gathering unto the Lord. There are people who make light. Church attendance is not a serious thing. But, had, but, but had, come on here, but had no problem. Type in error, right? Yeah. There are people, there are people who have a problem with coming to church, but have no problem with other gatherings. How many of you know a few people like that? As long as church, there is a problem. Market is not a problem. Georgetown is not a problem. Hanging out on the seawall is not a problem. Having a group of people in your house is not a problem. That walk everywhere and you're so sure they do not bring home the virus, but you're afraid to come to church because the virus might be there. Watch out. The problem might not be the virus. It might be you. But don't blame the church if you got something on you. Are you following what I'm saying? Do anybody know of some people like this? They have a problem. Watch out. If you're going to take a stand for the Lord, you got to look out for these spirits. These are spirits in operation in this time. And you got to watch these people when they talk to you. You are telling me not to go to church, and you are, doing, you are not taking church seriously, and then you don't care. You, you go here, you go there. You got 20, 30 people in one room, and you're talking to, about, to me about the problem if I go to church. That's not attending church. That's taking church lightly. That's what I'm talking about. That's the spirit I'm talking about. It's not a person. It's a spirit. Not a person. The spirit. Now hear what happens here. In verse 2, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 2. That you be not soon shaken in mind. That you do not be soon shaken in mind, nor be troubled. So here's what goes on in my next point. If I give all my money or all my life or everything to God, what is that to you? It's a spirit. And listen now. That spirit, this particular spirit, is one that do not work from far. This is a spirit that work from your closest friends and family. This particular spirit of confusion and commitment and that create doubt is those in your own inner circle who is telling you, you don't have Because what happened is that when you're going all the way, this demon is trying to bring you down because this demon is tolerating a lot of trash and a lot of evil. Like I said on Sunday, I'm not going back to that. This demon is friendly with other spirits. So your commitment is tormenting this spirit. So this spirit don't want to be exposed. So Amen. Are we doing well, Ramona? All right. There are some people who like me for this, right, Ma? My mother liked when I do this. She don't like when I talk about politics. She said, two things I don't like. I don't like when you talk about money. And I don't like when you talk about politics. Thanks, Ma. Yeah. <laughs> so I got to stay with the word. Right, Chris? Yeah, for my mother's sake. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is what it does. 
is that it attacks your mind. So let me tell you what's going on in the head of a lot of people. Your own family member is creating doubt. And some of you are saying, listen, I want to serve the Lord and I can't live with this man anymore. I want to serve the Lord and I can't. So you're contemplating divorce for the Lord's sake. I hope so. I can tell you why if anybody is contemplating serving the Lord, one of the things they're not leaving is the house of God. But you don't have to leave your wife and husband. You don't have to let them drag you down. You got to be so strong in the spirit that you're going to lift them up, that you're going to pick them up, and the Lord is going to help you to bring them out. All of us have five people in our circle that is trying to bring us down so that they could do their own thing. But I bless you tonight that God is going to raise you up and God is going to strengthen you that you will bring them up and they will have no opportunity to bring you down. Can somebody give the Lord some praise tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Constantly attacking your mind, creating doubt and confusion. One of the other things they do, one of the other things these people do, and this is the other point, they, they know how to turn the Word of God into a question. Make you question your own stand with God. Y'all know the Spirit? Make you question your own love for God. Watch out for the Spirit. And so, they turn the Word of God into a question to make the Word of God suit their own sinful ways. Do you know people like that? They don't call the sin the name of the sin. They don't call people that are possessed, say they're possessed. They say they're bipolar. Is how many poles people got? Well, I want you to know, when God made you, He made you with one pole. If you got two poles, it's time to get rid of one. You ain't no bipolar, ain't no spirit coming on you Saturday night that is not of the Lord and it's okay to serve the Lord Sunday morning. We, somebody need to be delivered. Tell me about bipolar. Come to this altar, we take care of them poles. Yeah. One time I told a man, I said, why, why are you always cussing when you walk in? He said, I said, don't cuss, cuss when you walk in by me by. He said, man, I did drunk. I was drunk and I didn't know what I was doing. I said, okay, tomorrow I will be drunk and I will put a good beating on you. And the next day, I will say, I was drunk and I did not know what I did. He never cuss again. Because if you could be bipolar, I could be plenty polar. These are spirits that you have to understand that are operating, that are drawing mercy from us. And it's getting, for, get, getting, getting us to pity these spirits. But little do you know, the spirits that we pity and we are sorry for, they are demons that are working in our minds and bringing us down. And we don't even know. So my next point is going to show you that. Constantly coming up with different things. You shut them down one way, they come up another way. Have you met people like that? They're constantly coming up with new things, targeting your commitment with the Lord, constantly trying to bring you down. It's a spirit that is an assignment against your life. But I declare tonight in the name of Jesus that all these spirits that are working against you, that the blood of Jesus Christ protect you, the Word of God in you, and the Spirit of the Lord upon you. 
push these things away. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. Constantly working on you. Coming up with different strategies to slow you down. My next point is that the truth, which is the Word of God, is going to always separate, is going to always divide us. I think Hebrews 4.12 says this. For the Word of God, what? Good job, Daniel. For the, let's read. For the Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Listen, the Word of God goes middle down our chest and divides. So what the Word of God does is separates what is of God and what is not of God. How many of you, the Word of God has done that too already? When the Word of God has been preached... And we feel bad. We feel sinful. Because we end up in the wrong. By the standard of the Word of God. So here is the point. When we are cut by the Word of God. And here is where the separation is being made. The truth will always separate or divide. This is my next point. Let's read. The truth will always separate or divide. It will place different persons on different sides. People will correct themselves while others will defend their wrongdoing. So that is where another spirit is being exposed. When the word of God is being preached, there are some people who will correct themselves, but there are some people who will defend their wrong. But may I say to you tonight, it's better you make it right here because there will be no time to make it right when suddenly, somebody say suddenly. So which side are we on? Who is that person that defends their wrong? And who is that person that repents or corrects? They're wrong ways. So there is a spirit out there that is changing the word. No man, don't worry with apostle. Don't worry apostle, he only talking. Well, that's okay. If you think I'm just talking. But wait until you meet him with a nail scar in his hands, and he says the same thing. Because this is the word. You, can, you can't have it your way. You have to have it God's way. A man looked at me today he's from another region he said apostle 
we were watching, my wife and I were watching, and my family was watching one of your messages. And whenever you said, talked about tithing, and you said, how can someone pay 10% and be left with 95 or 98%? He said his wife looked at him because he's a businessman. He said his wife looked at him and said, you got to get this right today. There is no other time because you make a lot of money, you can give or you can make 10% what you want to. So me and him were talking today. And I said, she said the right thing. And there are people like that who wants to do the right thing. I believe that God has people all over the world who had enough of doing the wrong thing. And they want to make it right. Because what this pandemic has taught us, money, this world, this land, this house, this car, don't mean anything. America is in as much of trouble as Haiti. Confused and don't know what to do. And Uncle Donald Trump is already talking about the election will be rigged. While Dr. Rowley had to say to the Trinidadians, this is not Guyana. The confusion is everywhere. But while the world is confused, God and God's people has got to be the people who have the answers. Who have made a decision to serve God and serve Him the right way. Do God have some people here tonight? Amen. Amen. The truth will separate. Do not be on the side where you defend wrong. Be on the side where you repent and turn from evil. Is that okay? Amen. There is a spirit behind us that is trying to bring us down. And something is happening with me. And I don't know how long it's going to last. But Pauline said, all these messages that you're preaching, why did you wear that shirt? I said, well, I'm going to preach a happy message tonight. Everybody's going to be happy when I'm done. I hope you guys are happy. <laughs> And so something is going on. What was I, where was I at? What was I talking about? Start. Around the world. And it's deep. Jesus said there are people who have eyes and cannot see. But if he says that there is people who have eyes and cannot see, there must be people who have eyes but they can see. Are you following what I'm saying tonight? And so, this is not Jesus calling, sorry. <laughs> I'm not ready. The truth will separate, it will place different sides. Be of those who will turn over, who will turn away, who will turn around. Right? Watch this. The Bible says now in verse 3. Right? Verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. So there is a lot of means, a lot of ways, a lot of message. Girls, boy, boy, girl, girl, boy. There's a lot of ways. 
being broke, being poverty, being wealthy, being smart, you know. I'm going to be the man for the rest of your life. But it's just that we can't get married now because I got certain things to take care of. I love you with all my heart. That's the problem. You have too much heart. I want anybody who got one heart. Right? I couldn't understand how, you, how, how much woman you could have heart for. Which woman would believe a man? Well, I got, a, I got a one heart for you, and then a heart so, and any heart. So Pauline were give, was given away. Pauline was given away a cup, that, a heart cup. Why you guys didn't take the cup? To the, the young ladies that came by my house the other day to help her. And so I said, well, yes, you take half of the heart, and one of y'all take the other half of the heart. So me and her are going to be separated. I was telling Miriam and Abigail and so. And they took me seriously. The next morning when we got up, the two heart cup was still there. No, Pastor, no. You let a heart stay right there. Yeah. So um, it's still right there. Bless the Lord. What happened is that the Bible said, let no man deceive you. There are many means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away. I need to talk to you about this. Somebody say falling away. Can anybody here tell me what's the falling away? Anybody here? You, you don't have to explain, but raise your hand. Let me see if you know the falling away. You know what the falling away is. Yeah. And Okay, let me tell you what's the falling away. The falling away, how the spirit works, y'all that is watching me tonight, how the spirit work is that this falling away is that, uh, and let's make my next point. The falling away, y'all going to like how I put this together here tonight. The falling away is that not necessarily falling away from attending church. So that person could still be in every service, but is a falling of precepts and standards. So that person still could make their religious know-how. You got to have a lot of spirit to recognize that. Because they've been preaching like me, they still have the know-how. Because they know how to sing, they still have the know-how. Because they could play music, they still have the know-how. But there's standards. So they're still there front, front, front and everything. On Sunday morning. But Sunday night, they're sending you text messages. Are we going to have dinner? Where are we meeting up tonight? What are we drinking? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Right? Shaking your hand in church and say, God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my sister. And, you know, you're another man's wife and you get a text by a man the, the, the following night. How you doing, hon? That's what I call the falling away. Nobody call me hon. I'm not your hon. Are you following what I'm saying? I'm your brother in Christ. Let it stay that way. Are you following what I'm saying? I am playing that game. So there is a falling away from the pulpit to the parking lot. People are there, Brother Amar. People are there. But their standards, it was has fallen away. So right in the house of God, a lot of antar bantar going on. You know, a lot of hold me, loose me. Man, <laughs> you understand? But there's a falling away that we need to understand. 
that this is not of God. Right? And so the falling away is not people missing church. So don't think because people don't come to church, they fell away. Right in the house of God. Somebody says it's a fall of standard. It's a, it's a fall of precept. Amen. Is anybody learning anything here tonight? Hallelujah. So this is what it is. Now, I got a special one for Indian people and some African descent people. That's another thing mommy don't like. She said, I don't like when you say black people. No, sorry, ma. People of African descent and people of Indian descent. I have no descent and I'm not descent. The falling away is a fall of your standards. Had anybody ever confused you in this church or another church? That, man, the way you shake my hand into brotherly like, the thing feel too lovely. The thing is not very sisterly. It's very ugly. Has anybody ever been there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, I'm doing this for 25 years, 28 years. Not every lady that come in church want to hear how I preach. Good looking man like me. But I got good intercessors, right, Sister Channel? Drive them spirit out. So if some people you see come, don't, don't, don't come back to church and you don't know why, I know why. People have been praying for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. So what happens is that there is a falling away from standard and precepts. Now, let me tell you how preachers fall away. When you want to know a preacher is falling away from God, and this is a big thing around the world, they start to promote themselves. They start to promote themselves, but you don't know it. And minimize Jesus. You see, I don't know if you all know who are spiritist people. Spiritist people like people to work for them. Somebody got to bathe you. Sometimes I walk on the seawall, I see people bathing one another. You know, one time I see a, man, a lady carrying out a man by Pegasus doing their spirit work. And they're not Indian people. And um, the poor man, when he out till in the water dealing with his spirit, then he realized his cell phone in the pocket. Now me, I sorry for the man. <laughs> he got a jumbie, plus he lost his cell phone. I sat down watching this whole proceedings, you know. People of African descent. So there are people, sometimes I see it a lot on BVC wall. And these people who came from spiritists, they always want somebody to wind them and grind them and spin them wrong. People who came from Indian descent, from them kind of Indian work, what it does do, they like the same thing. So there are preachers around the world who know there are people who go to church who like that. So they use the name of the Lord and the church of the Lord to be a man of God, a woman of God that is not a woman of God, but it's just that people like it. And people come to this church, they like it too. And you know the other thing what people like? 
People like people who could see demons. Well, you know, I was praying for you, and I see a spirit, and um, this spirit is after your husband. And I'm um, so seed of 500,000 or 10,000 or 1,000 US, and I want to get this spirit out. This time is the spirit talking to you. I have a problem with that, Sister Letter. How do all these pastors see all these demons? They don't see God. So you got to watch the people that you left certain religion, people working for you, but you come to church and you still want me. The reason why some people can't take me is because I don't practice that. Well, pastor don't come and he don't, he don't, he don't sit down and ting me and give me ting for saying a drink and ting for thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you wait for me, you're waiting long. Let somebody else make you a fool, not me. I can teach you the word of God. Are you following what I'm saying? And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So there is a spirit out there, especially in quarantine. And I warn Pastor Derek. I say, y'all behaving like all your men. Not you. But y'all quarantine people behaving like all your men. Y'all got people left in them kind of religion. And y'all practicing the same thing. I wouldn't doubt people from this church going to Barbies for read. And come for... Le, le, le. <laughs> it's a spirit. What it does, it diminishes the word of God. It attacks truth. But it makes you feel important and make you feel good. There are certain Christian television, television stations in the world, that's all they do. That's all they do. Promote themselves and sell things. In the name of the Lord, that has nothing to do with the Lord. After 15 minutes of preaching, 15 minutes of marketing. It's a spirit that has nothing to do with precept and standards, but to promote one's image and self. And when one buys in to a person's image and self, you become an idolater because you, be, because you make that person or that thing that they give you an idol. So you have left idol for another idol. That is why you go to Catholic church. It's all idols everywhere. Burn them. All the broom over your doors. All the bottle with glass and water. Pink bead, yellow bead, blue bead, black bead. Coming to church with big, big ticker. I want to know is what kind of demon people got that I can't take them out. And Jesus can't help you. That you got to let people make you fools. And this is for everybody who is watching. Because it's a spirit that contaminates. Let me tell you what happens. It is so dangerous. When you get contaminated with those kind of spirit, you disallow God to move for you. So you believe your church is not working. You believe God is not working. It's not that God is not working. You are engaged in nonsense. Things that you should stand against, you're promoting. But it's a subtle spirit. It comes in. You've been going to church so long and you ain't got your breakthrough yet. You ain't got your breakthrough yet. You don't go back to that church. You're supposed to get your breakthrough whispering. Whispering spirit. 
Hallelujah. Subtly, the next point is that subtly promoting one's own ambition and self-will above the will of God by using the name of Christ, the house of God, and the people of God. Hallelujah. Don't let nobody use you. Don't let nobody use you to serve God. Let God use you to serve people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let nobody use you to serve God. Let God use you to serve people. So there's a lot of people who have come from this spiritist movement who end up back in a spiritist thing. Because there are preachers who take advantage of that group of people. Because they like to feel that somebody working for them. And that's the spirit that has crept in big time in the church. On that note, I will encourage you to... When you go home, Google something called the Benny Hinn's Confession. And listen to what Benny Hinn had to say about the way he did ministry before. And take your lesson from it. Benny Hinn is no child. So I could make reference to that. And he took a stand. Because he realized so many years what he did. And he said, I'm never going to do it again. Thank God for Benny Hinn and that confession. Make sure you follow it. You, you see it. Because a lot of people know him, especially in Guyana. And they like those kinds of ministry. And so here's what the Word of God says. And I'm closing here now in verse 4. The Spirit opposes and exalts itself above all that is called God or that is worship so that He as God crept into your mind and home took the place of God and you do not know it. And being worshipped as God. And so in many churches today, the pastor and the leaders are involved in so much underhand things. So much cover up that they can't speak the full truth because the money people are going to leave the church and certain sisters are going to leave the church and certain people are going to leave the church. So they don't say certain things because they're involved in certain things. But bless the Lord for life spring. I know what's going to leave the church. The wrong is going to leave the church, but the people are going to stay. The sin is going to leave, but the people are going to stay. The demon's going to leave, but the people are going to stay. Stand up, put your hands together, and let's give him praise tonight. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give him praise. Hallelujah. I know what's going to leave. I know what's going to leave. Every demon shall leave. The spirit of confusion shall leave. Witchcraft and familiar spirits will leave. But a godly man and woman of God will remain. Is anybody here loving Jesus tonight? Who is that person online? You're loving Jesus tonight. 
You're not leaving. You're not going anywhere. But these spirits got to go. Somebody say, I know some spirits that got to go. Anybody here tonight, you've identified some spirit, they have to go. And I say by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, they got to go. I say, they got to go. We will remain. We will remain. We will remain. For all our online viewers, I speak over you and your household. Every spirit of darkness, of witchcraft, every subtle spirit that crept into your home, your ministry, crept into your life, shut you down, shut your family down, shut your marriage down. I command in the name of Jesus, every spirit go right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit, I command you, lose your heart. Loose your hold right now. Satan, you have no place. I said, devil, you have no place. I command every spirit of confusion, every attack on your mind in the name of Jesus. I say you have no place. I say let go of that man. Let go of that young lady. Let go of that young man. Let go of that ministry man. In the name of Jesus, I speak to every unclean spirit. I say you have no place here tonight. Every proud spirit, you have no place. In the name of Jesus. And I declare the sons of God arise tonight. I declare that God has marked you man of God. God has marked you, woman of God. And he has marked you for your best life. Every spirit of death, of slow death, in the name of Jesus. Deception in the name of Jesus. You have no place. Every man, every woman be sanctified tonight. Every child be sanctified. In the name of Jesus, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. In the name of Jesus, can you lift your voices, please, and begin to talk to the Lord right where you are. As you give an assignment, as you give commanding orders, as you give orders to every spirit. Come on, whether you know of it or not, come on, begin to command every spirit, every wicked spirit to leave you. Your home is, you're not coming down. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Look, softly here, guys. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. There is none like you. Hallelujah. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence. Your presence is heaven to me. Why the reverb? Your presence. Your presence is heaven to me. We're singing. Again. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, your presence is heaven to me, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, your presence is heaven. Hallelujah. 
Lord God Almighty, let a spirit of sanctification, let a spirit that cleanse. As the spirit of truth and the word of God has been released in our hearts tonight, as we are divided, I pray God there will be no rebellion, but there will be repentance. In the name of Jesus, Lord. There will be re repentance, Lord. So tonight, as we submit and surrender to you, Lord, we pray that you have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your full way in our lives. Cause us to meditate on these things. Oh, Lord, as we need you, as we want more of you, Lord, for your honor and glory, Lord. We bless you and we praise you, God. We bless you and we praise you, Lord. We give you all the glory tonight. Lord, let all your sons and daughters know that your hands are upon them and you have called them to a better place. Your will be done. Your will be done, O oh Lord. To a better place in you, your will be done. In Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Thank you for tuning in online. Please share these messages. Hallelujah.